massive yeah. cross he's out. on him. And I was kind of like, I was worried about him. It's like he'd been assassinated or something there. But I know <laughs> he's been ill and he's had to withdraw from the tournament. But OK, we're off with the moves, David. Yeah, yeah we're off with the moves. And it's disappointing we can't see you entering yeah. right now. Hopefully, hopefully we can uh, get her camera back in a moment. But it is the Queen's Gambit. It's uh, for the chess queen, the women's world champion. And uh, it's the Queen's Gambit accepted. So this is a variation of the Queen's Gambit accepted. Black won a pawn temporarily. White won the pawn back, so it's level material right now, and we are likely to see at some point a very symmetrical pawn structure. And this is a very modern way of treating it, uh, treating the Queen's Gambit accepted for white. It looks very, very modest. White has castled the king. White's just going to put pieces on very natural squares and take the battle to the middle game. Um, Simon, maybe you have more experience in this type of uh, structure than I do. As far as I know, it's quite balanced. Yeah, not not really, David. I mean, I, I've actually always struggled playing uh, against the Queen's Gambit Accepted, but I think uh, Dominguez has done a chessboard course on it. Am I right in thinking that? So he, he obviously knows the opening incredibly well, but uh, the way they're playing, the speed they're playing, it must all be theory. And I like what uh, Drew Wenjun has done here, guaranteeing a lovely square for the White Knight. Yeah. It, it is actually theory. And up until now, they were following, up until this... Uh, um, pawn move, uh, this a2 to a4 pawn move, um, it, they were following a game uh, that uh, Dominguez had played himself, that Dominguez had won. But uh, now they're in different territory and uh, Dominguez still playing very, very quickly. Yeah, what's interesting to me is that Dominguez is playing instantly. He's been blitzing out all his moves, but the evaluation bar, the computer really likes White's position. So um, maybe Dominguez just assumes that this is the type of advantage that could fizzle out. If black is really accurate, he can neutralise um, white's activity. Simon, this is the square you were talking about, right? This dream outpost for the white knight, the c4 square. Um, it's dynamite here, c4. Oh, oh. Just yeah, me. Yeah, pin, pin, <laughs> pin drop. <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't have to explain my own jokes. But, uh, yeah, this white knight is uh, on, a great, uh, on a great square. I've got to warm up a little time. bit, you know, so just, just getting into the swing of things. So. Oh, oh, thanks, cool. guys. Thanks for the support there. <laughs> and uh, meanwhile, black is castled, so we're finally at the end of the opening. Aha. Yeah. After 14 moves, we're out of the opening and in the middle game. And, uh, well... This kind of position, is it uh, too early to say if it's like drawish? Is it yeah. something that could be quite dramatic? I think it's a great opening choice from Zhu Wenjun. I'm slightly surprised Dominguez has gone into this because white is super solid. Um, even if there is another trade of uh, pawns in the center, I don't see too much going wrong for white. It's roughly symmetrical, lots of pieces on the board. White is rock solid, no weaknesses. And I was going to say beforehand, Zhu Wenjun, she can use this strategy against higher rated players, especially players like Dominguez, who they're far, far behind on the points right now. They need to take risks to beat her. So she can just say, OK, I'm going to be solid, not take any risks. You're the one who's going to have to gamble. You're the one who's going to have to uh, kind of come at me and risk everything. And that's how she beat players like Rapport yesterday, how she beat Wei Yi. They pressed too hard against her and she just counterattacked. Mm. It's a really good strategy because, I mean, uh... In the past, when I've played higher rated players, I've probably taken the other strategy, mm -hmm. trying to mix it up, trying to complicate it, trying to trying to do something before they do. But allowing your opponent to come at you uh, and to overextend themselves is kind of like uh, just a very good war strategy in general, isn't it? Allowing the opposition to try too much and uh, it's working very well. I mean, she's a great player and she's proven that already. Um, some exchanges in the middle here. I mean, Dominguez is still playing at the speed of light. Yeah, and the way he's looking, so he was looking off to his left, um, on towards the right on our screen, but he's looking off towards his left. That normally means a player's just trying to memorise something. So he's probably studied this exact position before or something very similar, at least. And you're right, Simon, he's been playing so fast and that means he's within his homework still. Yeah, yeah. and uh, there are 20 games in the database and uh, with great players playing them, we have Alex... Um, I've forgotten his first name, my mind has gone black. Dreyev. Okay, Alexei Dreyev. Alexei Dreyev, yes. Uh, he faced off against Ernesto Inakiv, and then we have Borky Predovcevic against Roman Edouard. And uh, again, we'll have a list of just grandmasters all playing this opening with both white and black. Okay, and... and the most popular response is actually to capture back with the pawn, with the bishop. But that's not the only move. Uh, if white wants to initiate more trades, and this is why Ju has taken a pause, she can also capture the knight, which is actually played. Also another popular choice. And uh, knight takes knight. That is, again, the only move. And now, OK, 
You can capture the pawn with the bishop or the queen. Both sides, both moves, totally viable. Yeah, and uh, if you take with the bishop, it looks like you have nice control. This bishop looks very strong. I guess if you take with the queen, you need an answer. Um, there is a big threat, I should mention, on the board along this diagonal. White's queen wants to capture, for example, uh, this pawn and give checkmate. That would be a very nasty end to the game, but uh, you do need an answer to this bishop move. And uh, has this been played before, Yavanka? It has been played before, and now, get this, White has tried. I don't know whether it's a great move. Uh, this, all the games that have been played in this particular uh, position has ended in a draw. White zoomed to the edge of the board, to the a7 square, and uh, counter-attacked the bishop. Well, this would be uh, very, <laughs> very creative by Zhu Wenjun. I don't think she has studied this exact position, so if she finds a manoeuvre like this, which is quite counterintuitive, putting a queen on the edge of the board, then... Fair play to her, but OK, she goes for the more solid approach, and I think this is a good move too. Just taking back the pawn with the bishop, and these two pieces stand great right now. You could definitely imagine a situation where white just exchanges off black's best bishop uh, on the next turn, and then starts to maybe try and get this rook into the game. I slightly prefer white, if anything. How about you guys? Yeah, I mean, I think black still has to try to equalise this position. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> if you just compare pieces, uh, white's got this lovely knight, uh, what, one of the problems that white does get long term, though, mm -hmm. is the c3 square. Maybe we can highlight that one, David, yeah. um, just in the ending mm. or later on. If, if black can ever get a piece to that square, especially the knight, maybe after an exchange of dark square bishops, that, that can win the ending, and especially because the white pawn next to it can also be very, very weak. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are some sort of long term problems. Uh, that white white can have in, in this type of position. Yeah, long term, as you mentioned, Simon, maybe this is a target if the queens dis uh, disappear. But uh, meanwhile, what do you think of this move? Dominguez, again, very, very quickly, he's barely pausing for thought. Uh, he just pushes his pawn, and this looks like a bit of a target now, the knight. Uh, the knight looking at this pawn, the black queen is going to be tied down defending it for a long, long time. Strange. Yeah. I must say I'm a bit surprised by this. and. Either he's done his homework very, very deeply, up to move 17 in a non-forcing variation, or he's just trying to play by instinct. And he is a big expert on these types of uh, openings, as Simon mentioned. So uh, maybe he understands it a bit deeper than me here. Yeah, um, it has been played before. I mean, again, not the most popular uh, position we've ever seen. But uh, we have a Swiss grandmaster, Noel Studer. He's played this move twice. And uh, also Ivan Sokolov, very strong okay. um, Grandmaster from Holland has also played this. Not without success, though, because he did lose his game. Yeah, all this name-dropping, it's just like a list of Grandmasters. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I think we'll start that challenge at some point. Uh, someone was saying, name as many Grandmasters as you can in 30 seconds. Yeah. We need to start that. Uh, wow. <laughs> I mean, the names you've been listing off there, Yovanka, those, uh, those should feature on this list. Yeah. 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 Not right now, though. <laughs> in 30 seconds. You, and you have to sort of be strategic because, I mean, if you choose a lot of, for example, the Russians with these super long names, it yeah. takes too long. You need to choose David Howell, for example. That's a good one to choose. Wesley So. Wesley So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But then you can just do the surnames, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's, pro yeah, that's so, clever. Boo, and so. then, yeah. 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 You could do like Van Furries and then you get two in one go. Exactly. Two yeah. uh -huh. Times two, how will you get two? Yeah, how will you yeah, get Well, two? we actually Change. need to set the rules straight for this challenge. <laughs> coming later, coming later in the tournament, but you can start practicing. Mm -hmm. Huh. It's yeah. true. It looks like Dominguez, he's trying to think right now, how many grandmasters can I name? <laughs> how many? <laughs> <laughs> it would be cool to see the viewers do it. And Ju know? is actually her last name. That's a short one too. Ju. Ju. Yeah. 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 And there's, in, I mean, China, you can, I mean, there's oh. you. Uh, yeah. I remember once getting called out by Anand. I played a game against Anand and afterwards we were analysing. He was like, you've played this before. I was like, no, I haven't. You played this before. No, I haven't. It's like, no, the Chinese grandmaster, you played it before. So, so, so you could just say, you, Ju. Yeah. Ding. 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 Yeah. Okay. Uh, is also, I don't know how to pronounce that one, I'm sure I've kind of have to totally, but that's a common Vietnamese name. Yeah, there's a few grandmasters with that surname. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, something to work on. So, so we know that that's a name with only two letters. Are there any grandmasters with only one letter in their last name? Wow, maybe, I mean, I'd like to change my name just to X. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Simon, Simon X. Simon X. Not yeah. Simon W. It's a bit boring, isn't it? You know, X sounds a bit more like, yeah. you know, bad kind of James Bond villain, doesn't it? You know, live in my castle in the sea or something. Yeah. Simon X. No, I think, I think it has to be two letters, doesn't it? Which is, can't be any one letter. 
What was Isn't... Grandma Sickener? No, it can't be. What's the child of uh, yeah, that Elon big, Musk? Yeah, big chess fan, Elon oh, Musk. Yeah. yeah. He always tweets about chess. I saw this yeah. picture of him in his uh, school chess club recently when he was young. I know, yeah. I, I, I think yeah, he said it was quite. A, I think he said it was quite a simple game, though, didn't he? Uh, in one of his tweets, Elon. So he obviously got that a little bit wrong. Yeah. But, this uh, is not a simple game. This is uh, not a simple this one, game. at least. No. But yeah, I think his kids like XY234.5 <laughs> or something. So strange. But, Maybe yeah. not the easiest surname of a grandmaster to no. remember. In some countries, you wouldn't be allowed to name your child that. I, I remember Ty, Tiger Hillip Person was telling me an interesting story. Tiger is from Sweden, and he's one of the only Swedish people called Tiger because mm -hmm. you're not allowed to give yourself, you know, you can't call your kid the strange name. It's just not allowed. So he had to get, his mum had to get special permission from the priest to be called Tiger. And then he got, and he was able to be, you know, one of the only Swedish people to be able to, you know, call yeah. Tiger. So, uh, oh. yeah, but you can get away with anything nowadays, can't you? Really, change your name. Uh, in in the US, I think you can get away with anything. Maybe in US, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah some very dodgy names. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so we won't go there. <laughs> All the apples and the, yeah. yeah. I have a great yeah. story, but I'll tell you after the, after <laughs> the show. <laughs> happened to one of my sister's friends in America. Ooh. But anyway. Oh, you can't you can't tease us like that. Yeah, well, I'm going to have to, because yeah. otherwise... <laughs> in trouble. Yes. All right. We do have a rook move. Yeah, we've had a couple of moves since we last discussed the position, and not too much has changed. I guess it's just mainly that the dark squared bishops are about to leave the board. And uh, a trade of dark squared bishops... I'm not 100% sure who that favours. Um, you would think in general that that would favour black because white's bishop in the middle of the board looks fantastic, but it would help to activate white's rook that has just moved if black were to initiate the exchange right now. And maybe we can jump in because the move I want to play, just because I'm a caveman, is a very direct threat. I would love for Dominguez to pick up his queen, uh, which is not doing too much, and play the move he's just played. He threatened checkmate on this square with his queen, with his bishop. Uh, this is a bit of a weakness, and Zhu Wenjun, of course, it's foreseen this, and she just dropped back her bishop to defend. And the reason I like this for black is because not only are you looking down at the white king, but also from this square, you might be protecting um, this weak pawn that I highlighted a bit earlier. Uh, so just indirectly protecting it at some point. And again, big question, what does black play here? Can you just move your rook across? Do you maybe move the bishop into the center at some point? Do you trade a set of bishops? If you trade, then maybe that helps white. I don't know, this rook looks pretty good right now. It's a lot of questions, actually. A lot of choice in the current position for black. What do you guys think? What's the first move that jumps out mm. to you? I, I, would, I was just trying to think in positions like this, obviously you mentioned there's a lot of exchanges which are possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's kind of like, which pieces do you want to exchange? I think it's always worth asking yourself that question. So if you're playing on the black side of this position, what minor pieces do I want to get off the board? And I think you're right. I think you're right, David. Well, you know, you normally are. Uh, when you say when you say the bishops come off and he swapped them off, that helps black. It's, uh, it seems like that's a great exchange. Mm -hmm. And I, I'd even be trying to swap off. Well, White's knight seems like such a powerful piece, but I don't really want to exchange my knight off for it because I could see the black knight having potential. I'm wondering about swapping my bishop off that knight, but not convinced by that either. So, uh, so I, I, I don't know. They both have good pieces, don't they, in this position? Yeah, it could so. be a case of knights versus bishops. As you mentioned, there is an idea of maybe planting the bishop in and then taking this knight, or at least hinting at it uh, at some moment. And it's that manoeuvre you mentioned earlier, Simon, that really attracts me. Yeah. I'm not sure right now or a bit later, but at some point trying to jump into this beautiful outpost that black has secured for himself. Now the dark squared bishops are off the board, white dark squares are slightly weak. So I'm expecting to see uh, that happen from Dominguez's next move. Meanwhile, we have seen Zhu Wenjun pause after this bishop capture. Is she really thinking of taking back this bishop with a pawn? The reason we didn't even mention that really is because this pawn is simply isolated. It's not going to go anywhere anytime soon. It can be blockaded on the square in front of it by black's bishop or black's knight, for example, with a bishop now, uh, or with a knight, maybe even stronger, jumping into the square. So. It's really surprising that Zhu Wenjun has paused for thought right now. Mm -hmm. She spotted something else. I mean, you have to take this bishop back. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, just wondering whether, if we can pull up her camera, maybe it's just an issue of the computer freezing, or... No, no she's, she's just thinking. Yeah, um, yeah strange a very strange decision, oh. because you do not want to capture that bishop with a pawn, as David highlighted. And, uh, Is she going to be tr uh, extra sneaky, extra tricky and try and push Harry the H-pawn, maybe? Yeah, I mean, I did just cheat by looking at the computer and it's kind of like, it just seems like 
you can get away with that move so often. You can <laughs> it's, get away with it here as I well. Think, yeah, it's um, unbelievable. Wow. What, a, what a find there, David, the, that you've, you, I mean, you've I'm, done. Yeah. I'm just trying to get into her head, and the only explanation for her pausing to think here, because rook takes bishop is such an obvious move, is that she wants to counterattack instead of grabbing the bishop. She wants to hit the black queen and, OK, let's get the board up because this is such a key moment and let's definitely keep an eye on Zhu Wenjun's camera because, Simon, you confirm that, pushing Harry the h pawn, you can do it in nearly any position. Uh, it looks like you just have to recapture a bishop, but first you can hit the black queen. It looks like you're giving a pawn away, but uh, if the queen takes the pawn, then you've actually tricked her, you've lured the queen onto a bad square and suddenly you're hitting the queen and you're hitting the knight at the same time. The black queen has to zoom back to protect her knight and suddenly, after the white queen moves, I'm not sure exactly what square, um, then again, you can hit the knight using the rook and queen and you've unpinned your own knight. So next move, when black defends the knight, you can maybe go and grab this pawn. Oh. It's hanging on the edge of the board. And I mean, this is two or three moves deep and... He's played it. Wow. She's wow. done for it. That's quite incredible she found that move. It's, it's so, I think most people would just grab that bishop without thinking they would not... I mean, even me, I love pushing that board. Yeah. I would not think about pushing it here. So, uh, you know, very interesting move played. It just shows such great awareness, right? Just yeah. uh, looking for every option and on every move, full board awareness. But it also shows such kind of self-control. Um, as Simon says, in this position, I would just think, OK, I'd pre-move almost, rook takes bishop, move on, look for the next move. But uh, just to kind of expand your horizons and even find a move like this one, pawn to h4 hitting the black queen and big dilemma now. What does Dominguez do with this black queen? Maybe he doesn't want to put it on the edge of the board where it will get hit by the white rook. Uh, and if he doesn't put it on the edge of the board, then where does it go? Ah, mm -hmm. It needs to ideally protect this pawn uh, over the next few turns. And that pawn is going to be a big, big weakness. Yeah, I mean, maybe just retreat it, David, to that sensible square yeah. and, and then try to play the knight manoeuvre that you mentioned. I mean, mm -hmm. the, that, the long-term problem, uh, I think, are on white side here. If that black knight can just slide into white's position yeah. uh, as the route you're showing here, that is a really problematic square in the long run because mm -hmm. uh, you, cannot, you cannot really get rid of that black knight. Uh, I mean, the white knight can be exchanged, but that black knight just can't ever be exchanged by a minor piece because the white bishop is on the wrong square. So uh, I think I think it's fairly even, I, I would say. I don't know what you think, Ivanka. I mean, it looks fairly even to me at, at the moment, but a lot of play in the position. Yeah, um, I have to say, because I, I, I really like counterattacks. I actually don't like white's position at all. And I'm just saying this right now, I think it's OK. White is safe, but I can just envisage a future where this pawn on h4 might be a little bit, little bit of a liability. And when I compare the bishops, I'm thinking black's bishop is amazing. White's bishop, just completely defensive piece. And all black needs to do is maybe just put a rook onto the fifth row and uh, again, put the knight into the dream square. And then, you know, you just start looking at it and you're like, oh, well, black has got the initiative there. So maybe, you know, maybe I'm just a bit too future focused, <laughs> maybe not living in the present, but um, I'm a little bit concerned, actually, that things can go the wrong way. Are you, are you a saver? Do you save your money rather than spend it? No. Do you I like, you have your piggy bank, <laughs> put the pound coins in since you're two years old? No, no, you know? no. <laughs> I'm not a saver at all, actually. Oh, you're not, huh? no. right, okay. So you, you don't play chess like you live life? <laughs> because one thing I've noticed, a lot of people live life like they play chess, yeah. right? You know, you have crazy sacrificial players. They're a bit of a lunatic, normally. <laughs> we have this, you know, you're safe and steady players, and they're a bit more like, mm, what am I, what am I going to eat tomorrow? <laughs> you know, kind of players. So, would you say you're like, you know, do that? I mean, what kind of player would you say you are? I, I would say I'm probably more on the side of careful, but I, I am a little bit instinct instinctive. So, are you a careful person? Y yes, in some things. You had to think about it. I was very, I, careful. I know, I very carefully thought about the answer there. Yeah, I did, <laughs> so, I did, I did, I did. I know which yeah. category you fall into, Simon. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <that's it. laughs> maybe let's not go there. You know, so, you know. uh, and what about you, David? You're, you're, you know, you played, you've got a very unique style of playing. Like, you, you love the grinding, the torture. I do. Yeah, the long game. That's, uh, that's so. my heaven, the grind. But, uh, yeah, when I was younger, I used to be more just kind of carefree. I just wanted to attack, and I thought checkmate was the only way to end the game, but now... I realise there's a lot more uh, and finesse to it. Too. Do you live your life 
as you play chess. Do I grind in real life as well? <laughs> um, yeah. uh, it's all about the long game. It's all about the long game. Well, you've got a, haven't you got a course coming out um, with, with the word grind in it? Is that yeah. right? Is, is this a dance course or a...? Uh, it's a no, it's a chessable course. That's okay. right, Simon. Yep. Um, What's it called? Uh, grind like a grandmaster. Yeah. Grind like a, are you going to be pulling some moves in it, though? Yeah. No. You as well have to buy it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there may or may not be some uh, slick moves in that. Oh, it's going to be a line now to get yeah. that uh, adjustable course. It's not out yet, but no. it's coming. It's coming. But it is a question, right? And we should put that question to everyone watching. You know, do you play chess the way you live your yeah. life? You know, are you carefree? Are you a saver? Are you ca are you cautious? Yeah. Are you a gambler? I want to know. Yeah. You can uh, tweet us using the hashtag #ChessChamps. Agree. I think that must be the best name for a chess course so <laughs> far. It's quite unique. Grind like a grandmaster. I like it. So, very special course as well. Yeah. People are going to have to right. buy it. I can't so. wait for it to be finished and, uh, yeah, for it to come out. And uh, Game 6 in the World Chess uh, Championship match in Dubai is uh, featured. That was a very long grinding game. And uh, later today, David is going to take us through Game 6 in the 1972 World Championship match. Was that a grind as well or was it crazy in another sense? That was a different kind of grind, maybe. Um, it was just, I mean, it was a masterpiece from Fischer. Both his opening choice, which really surprised Spassky, then his middle game was just artistic, kind of seizing control over the whole board. He had complete domination at some point, and then um, the finish was a bit more brutal than most grinds. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think that's regarded as one of Fischer's greatest ever games yeah. and one of the greatest games in World Championship history. Spassky even applauded him after the game. Yeah, Spassky, the gentleman, he knew that in that game, Fischer really showed his uh, his quality. Yeah, that's uh, also quite an interesting uh, story when it came to Spassky's preparation for the match. Uh, you know, he was convinced that uh, Bobby Fischer would only open with one move, that was push the king's ball forward. Mm -hmm. And when his uh, coaches and seconds said, you know, let's, let's look at your what you have against the queen's gambit, he goes, no, 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 I don't need to study because I'm just going to play this opening called Tartakova. And uh, where did he lose? In his beloved Tartakova. Wow. Um, OK. Yeah, so... That would never happen nowadays. Nowadays, all the top players know a bit about every opening. They have plans everywhere. Uh, in those days, they just prepared against one move. And, wow. Uh, and either the preparation worked or you were on your own. Wow. To freestyle. Wow. After a long pause, Lenya Dominguez did retreat his uh, queen and we do see the, the position that you predicted, David, on the board. Yeah, and this is where Simon mentioned just a very calm move, Black's knight rerouting. And, uh, OK, he doesn't go for that very calm move. He instead attacks the white rook and this is logical in some way. The white rook looked pretty good on this fourth rank, but pushing this, for, uh, this pawn forward does leave some looseness in Black's position. There's no longer a square for the Black Knight to use, or maybe a less stable square for the Black Knight to use in the centre. Um, I've got mixed feelings about this one. It looks decent for now, but I could see it backfiring later. I think you have to be very careful pushing pawns, don't you? Because they're, they're the only bits that can't go backwards. And when you push a pawn, you always weaken squares. And uh, both of the squares on either side of that pawn uh, are now weakened. And as you mentioned, David, the Black Knight might be a bit looser, but also the White Queen has maybe an aggressive square. It can get out the pin now. Maybe it could even jump in there at this moment in time. Yeah, let's show this um, time. Potentially. Yeah, you mentioned the Queen jump, and um, that's why pushing pawns. I mean, this pawn no longer has grip over this F5 square. A White Knight would love to land on this square, but um, this is a double attack. How does Black deal with this? Does he have to jump out the way with his Knight again? The Knight is attacked twice. Yeah. This Queen looks beautiful, but I guess Zhu Wenjun would need a follow-up. And I don't see one right now. Maybe this is what Dominguez is thinking. He's uh, just banking on the fact that the White Queen can get active, but it's kind of false activity. It looks nice and pretty, but it's not achieving too much. Also, you've got to be careful that the White Queen doesn't get trapped uh, by the Black Bishop at some point. I have cheated, mm -hmm. um, which I try not to do. <laughs> but, you know, it's my first day back. I'll take it a bit easy. You know, it's like going back to school again. You get a calculator out, put it on standby. Uh, and, and your neighbour's answers. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, there's some funny case of that in chess, which maybe we mentioned later, but there's an amazing idea here which the computer gives. Uh, and the computer gives, I think I just have to mention it, yeah. going queen d3. Oh, in which, the current position. In the current position, which, okay. which makes a lot of sense. You're getting the queen out of the pin. You're attacking the knight. Now, I don't know what happens if the knight moves, but um, the main line it gives is bishop d5, for okay. example. 
And now Queen takes Bishop. Whoa. Which is an incredible positional idea, I assume. Giving uh, up the Queen. And it says it's very good for white, uh, this variation. I don't know how strong this computer is. Maybe the computer. <laughs> this, I'll just check this laptop a little bit, make sure, <laughs> make sure it's working properly, because it looks a little bit wonky, doesn't it, that idea? But it's a very interesting... Uh, we love a queen sack, so it's a very interesting idea, at least. Yeah, so giving up the queen, but in return you get a rook and you have a bishop. Um, so it's not a massive material sacrifice, and I guess the justification is that you're going to win this pawn, that's guaranteed. And once you win this pawn, for example, if black moves, once you take this pawn, then white's A pawn is uh, a pass pawn. It's going to start advancing. And we could see it, you know, because yeah. she's uh, moved her queen to attack the knight. And uh, if Dominguez intercepts that attack with the bishop, then maybe. But I mean, even the rook, your vanker, I guess, she must as well, be planning yeah. it because if the rook yeah. moves to hit the queen, yeah. you don't want to run away. You don't want to yeah. step back and no. retreat. It's an incredible idea. She plays. I mean, if she finds this idea, she's. It's an incredible idea, isn't it? I mean, I don't know how many people have seen H4 and this idea of giving up the Queen there. Yeah. It's uh, brilliant yeah. stuff. If, I mean, if uh, Dominguez moves his knight, which is attacked right now instead, then the White Queen can still jump into the position maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean, I really hope he's just going to block on this square so we can see that beautiful oh. Queen sacrifice from the Women's World Champion. It takes a lot of guts, that though, to sacrifice your Queen, even, the, yeah. even if you do get material in exchange. So what kind of personality do we think? Oh, 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 come on, take it, take it. it. Let's keep an eye on the players because Queen yeah. takes Bishop would be an amazing move right now. Yeah. Oh, oh, she plays this. It's a round of applause move. Yeah, if she yeah. plays this and wins the game, which yeah. she might well do. And yeah. I guess Black's Queen is just not really too active right now. So this type of sacrifice would be justified. And she looks very interested in the position. Yeah. yeah. She looks so tempted. Queen takes Bishop, giving up the Queen, mm. getting this really powerful Rook. You will win this pawn. So you will get a Bishop, a Rook and a pawn for the Queen. That's level material anyway. Yeah, I mean, I was just wondering, David, if Black can move the Knight to mm -hmm. next to the Rook here. That's the only move I'm thinking I'd be a little bit worried about, yeah. but maybe it just doesn't help. Yeah. Maybe yeah. You, just, you just take the pawn, yeah. attack the Knight, and White's pieces control yeah. the board, don't they? And this is where uh, they're dominating the Queen. So it's, it's, it's a very clever idea. And, I just hope she plays it now. She gets control yeah. of the light squares and everything. Yeah. I love it. Oh, oh, she doesn't play it. I was, I was going to ask, how tempting is it to push the pawn as well yeah. and attack? Yeah. Oh, what a golden chance. Yeah, I should, I should be surely thinking about it there, surely. Maybe um, if it wasn't a rapid game, if she had more than three minutes on the clock, she would have uh, spent more time looking at it at least. Now she's not giving up her queen. She's simply trying to swap off the queens, exchange the queens, which makes sense as well, but she will lose a bit of time, for example. If Black says no, shuts the door and just pushes a pawn forward, blocking the queen trade. And uh, when the white queen moves, I'm not sure where, then I think Black should be completely fine now. Um, actually, I'm not sure about this square. Um, sorry, my misclick there. But um, yeah, in this position, it feels like Black should be fine. Um, just simply no way through. The black pieces actually guard a lot of entry squares now. Yeah. Oof, missed opportunity, maybe. Yeah. What kind of what kind of uh, person can we get anything from their personality from the way they're playing? Uh, do we feel? I mean, uh, Dominguez is very booked up, quite a, quite a tactical player, but quite safe. But he's very well, um, I don't know, researched. Yeah. So um, I, I mean, and Ju Wing Jun, we'd say is a great attacking player, but tactical vision is very good. I mean, I don't know. It'd be interesting if we could gather anything about their personality from the way they play. Yeah, I'd be inclined to agree with you, Simon. I mean, Lenia Dominguez, super super talented the best Cuban player since Capablanca, but, uh, okay, now I'm playing for the US, but, I mean, he's supplemented his kind of talent with so much hard work. Mm. Um, I know that the English number one, Michael Adams, uh, whenever we're playing in team tournaments, whenever we used to play Cuba, he would be like, oh, no, I have yeah. to play Dominguez. <laughs> and, oh, his openings are too good. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he nearly never loses, uh, at least in classical chess. That's interesting here, because I, I can't really imagine Mickey Adams you know, England's, maybe England's greatest ever player, yeah. being scared of anyone. Exactly. So uh, it's quite, you know, he can be scared. It gives us a bit yeah. of hope. So, um, but yeah, Dominguez is just really, he's, he's an incredibly strong player. I think he's been Blitz World Champion before, yeah. maybe as well. So, um, you know, a number of years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you have to have good instincts to become yeah. uh, Blitz yeah. World Champion. And of course, you know, we mustn't forget that he's a long time second of uh, Fabiana Caruana. Mm. Uh, helped him challenge for the crown in 2018. So, you know, very well prepared, a very, very strong grandmaster. 
And uh, Ju Anjun, of course, she's the Women's World Champion. Yeah. And uh, oh, I, I was trying to recall who's helping her, actually. She has a team behind her as well. Probably most of the Chinese. I'm thinking Yu Xiaoteng. Is that... Possibly, uh, yeah. I mean, he's coached a lot of, uh, a lot of the top <laughs> And she's got a smile on her players. face. Yeah, she yeah. looks pretty happy with her yeah. position. Yeah. yeah. I'm what... curious, what is she thinking about? She's just loving this white rook <laughs> that's just lifted up the board, just enjoying the fact it's in black's position. Yeah. That'd be really disconcerting if you're playing someone. There, there was this Russian grandmaster, I, I won't mention his name actually, but he played in England quite a lot and he would do that very often. He would just start smiling. You know, you're playing him and you're like, what have oh. I done? What have I done? He'd be like, <laughs> and he'd be like, why is he smiling? Why is he smiling? It would be a little bit odd, I think, uh, you know, so, but it's good to see them enjoying themselves as well. Yeah. I notice so, she does yeah. this though. I've sat next to her a few times in tournaments and she's always smiling. Yeah, it's great. Uh, yeah. 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 Enjoying the moment. Yeah, yeah no, uh, sometimes it's, yeah. it's all about, uh, as David says, just managing to just crack a smile and enjoy the situation that you're in. I did it once when I was totally lost. <laughs> and I, was, I had a horrible position. I could barely move. I didn't, you know, my opponent had so many winning uh, plans. And I just looked outside and I was playing in a, in a ski resort in Norway. And I thought, life is beautiful, actually. Let, let me, you know, look at how lucky I am. And I started smiling and I'm sure everyone who walked, walked past would have gone, why? <laughs> <laughs> And then, I, and then I looked down on my position. I thought, actually, they had one trick that I could try to set up. And so I set that up and uh, my grandmaster opponent fell for it. And then Ooh. the smile continued. <laughs> so <laughs> the smiling works. Yeah. 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 yeah, I know. I mean, you know, she's enjoying herself. It's nice to see that. A bit of mm. emotion over the, over the board there. Um, this looks like a lovely square, David, for the rook, doesn't yeah. it? I mean, the, the one that it's moved into and... Seems like she has a little bit of pressure maybe here, right? Dominguez yeah. definitely thinking he is now, for the first time in the game, under Ju and Ju on the clock. Yeah, and it's because Black has the questions to answer right now. White's rook is super active. Black's rooks look good, but they are just blocked out by the white knight, so they're kind of staring against this uh, ro kind of rock-solid statue, this knight, which is well fortified, and White's rook can maybe zoom across to the A file to start looking at Black's uh, weakness that we've been talking about on the A5 square, that weak pawn. White's other rook can slide across. White can double up rooks, hit the Black Knight. Meanwhile, what does Black do? Maybe Black can centralize the king. That would be first thing on my radar. But at some point, Dominguez is going to have to answer the question, what is he going to do with the Black Knight? Now there's no path into the position like Simon was highlighting earlier. OK, he does centralize his king. This is maybe the most logical move. Um, that's the only piece not, uh, not participating. But how is Black's knight going to get into the position? How are you ever going to get rid of White's knight? If you ever traded off with Black's bishop, then White's bishop suddenly becomes uh, a strong piece as well, just replaces the White knight. Oh, it would be so tempting now to just go across with the White rook. Mm -hmm. right. I, I'm also wondering what Black's next move is. Yeah. This is a really good thing to do that not enough lower-rated players do. Uh, they're only thinking about their own ideas, and I think the the f the basic step you can do to improve your game is to think about what your opponent's next move was. And just in that last position, I couldn't really see a very good move for Black, uh, but it's, it's a good way to think. But okay, well, interesting maneuver happened on the, yeah. the game. Can she win a pawn? Yeah, I'm just thinking, can oh. she not step forward or just take the pawn as a? Uh... Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, yeah. it looks like she can Why just not? get greedy right now. Yeah. And uh, she has a couple of ways with which to do this. It looks like it's all gone wrong for Dominguez in the current Ooh. position. Um, if we just backtrack to show what was happening, as Simon mentioned, Black barely has a move here, right? Black is struggling to find a move, but she decided to be direct, attacking this pawn with her rook. And after the Black Knight retreats, hitting this rook, first of all, if, if in doubt, just give a check. You don't have to rush. You can give a check and then decide what to do next move. But uh, also the big question, can you just go, uh, guzzle up this pawn? Rook takes pawn. If uh, rook takes rook, yes, your knight's temporarily offside. Maybe Dominguez's idea is to get the black rook into the position, but you have won a pawn. It feels like it should be good for white somehow. OK, she does give a check instead, but this pawn is going to drop. Dominguez's idea is to offer a trade of rooks, and his yeah, he must be banking on the fact that here he can get active with his rook. Otherwise, there's no other justification. I mean, if white gets time, for example, to just drop back with the knight, or maybe even come forward with the bishop. It's just a clear pawn and black's pieces are still passive. Mm -hmm. So his whole idea is to get active. And are we going to see this happen on the board? Is she going to get greedy and grab a pawn? I think she needs to. And here we go. The rook is now attacking this pawn with the bishop. 
and what to do here. Big question. She's done the hard work. She's won a uh, very important pawn, but what's next? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess the first thought would be to move the bishop, but I mean, you can try to swap the bishops off maybe, yeah. but it does come with a little bit of risk, I think, as well. Because let's say black exchanges the bishop, we can show this. Now you kind of want to take the knight, yeah. um, but maybe now black's knight can activate and yeah. things... But it seems like black's getting a bit active, maybe. I don't know, there's yeah, still a bit right. of danger here, maybe. I mean, I, I know, yeah, that's, that, that's a, a little, little bit dangerous, little right? Bit, yeah. Another very tempting uh, idea in the current position. Yes, this pawn is attacked, but um, I'm just thinking of uh, the time that you tricked us, Simon. This black knight is on the back rank, and uh, you could kind of fix it uh, in the knight stable. Uh, you could uh, bring the bishop stable. forward, just try to lock this knight in. Look how the bishop dominates the knight. Um, the knight has nowhere to go, but I guess it would come at the cost of giving back your pawn. Okay, she does offer a trade of bishops. I was going to say here, you give back your pawn, but at least your bishop is dominating the black knight right now. I'm not sure whether this is uh, enough. Instead, oh, we didn't see the knight stable. I'm a bit gutted about that, but <laughs> bishop takes uh, bishop and key moment. We mentioned knight takes, maybe allowing the black knight to come out. Is she going to take with the pawn, maybe? It's possible, right? Mm -hmm. You do give black a passed pawn, though. And you do allow black to maybe go behind and win this guy. Yeah. Suddenly it's less clear. Yeah, it kind of feels like black is just active enough uh, to sort of uh, have at least good holding chances here. Uh, could be wrong, of course, but now I, I guess this this is a position I was a little bit worried for Ju Wenjun if Domingos just brings his knight out. There are other options, of course, um, but bringing the knight, improving your pieces, defending your central pawn there, keeping the threats going, just looks so natural uh, to play this move quickly. And they're, they're both getting quite short time, right? So they're, yeah. they're going to have to start picking up the pace soon. I think that's a great move, Simon, uh, bringing the knight out into the game. Uh, the problem is, if you take this pawn as black, then you do have to worry about white grabbing another pawn. OK, he has done this. At least now I was going to say the black knight is once again dominated by white's knight. But at least now Dominguez has the idea of going after white's remaining queenside pawn. So. Uh, are we going to see the Hoover come out, everything disappear? Or can Ju and June work some magic and yeah. grind out this endgame? It's, uh, I, I do wonder, and OK, so we're actually going to see this. Um, and uh, he doesn't go for the A-pawn oh. instead. So I wonder whether he was afraid that maybe White's Rook is going to get active. Yeah. But uh, what's to stop the White Rook? I'm thinking of transferring it to the fifth, fifth row and then trying to get behind the pawn. I like that. That's a very nice idea, I think. Yeah. yeah. Best place to, if your opponent's got a pass pawn, you're starting to get worried about, uh, and it's a rook ending. I uh, think, and this is a great idea, Ivanka. Getting your rook behind your opponent's pass pawn is the ideal situation, well worth remembering. And the rook is very active there. That's that's a lovely maneuver, actually. Yeah, yeah. It looks very very good, and uh, you will gain time against this black knight in the process. For example, uh, if the pawn pushes forward, you hit the black knight, and where is it actually going? It doesn't really want to sit on the edge of the board. It looks pretty bad there, temporarily at least. And uh, if it goes forward, you can pin it and win it. Would this make it into your, if, if Ju Wenjun wins, <laughs> your grind like a grandmaster course, maybe? Yeah. Because it's a bit, Part bit, two, maybe. Could Part be a two. puzzle, right? It could be. I mean, there's definitely some grinding going on here yeah. uh, with, with white. It's the pawn up still. If she moment. wins in 100 moves, I'll uh, nominate <laughs> it for, <laughs> for the course. <laughs> Is that, it's got to be 100 moves to get in your course. Yeah, Is it's that... got to be, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, over 68 plus one moves. <laughs> Yeah. 69. <laughs> yeah. It's got to be a long end game grind. You have to show, you have to win by outlasting your opponent, by yeah. tiring them out, and yeah, by eking out these small advantages. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, the Black Knight now on the edge of the board. We mentioned that this isn't a great piece, and maybe it's trying to get back into the game. How can we stop it from uh, not using that square, but using this square? Yeah, so it's just pushed on, and. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's gonna, they're going to have to, I mean, calculation is very important, these type of endings as well, because they both got dangerous past pawns. So you assume when you get to an ending, you know, calculation is not so important, but in actual fact, it can be more important. And it's, it's a good thing to train in simple tactics in the ending. I mean, can, can the Black Knight now come in, David, do you think, or is that too risky? Yeah, I think the Black Knight would love to come in, but yeah, you definitely have to calculate whether White's A pawn is now the more dangerous of the two past pawns. It might be time to perhaps, um, I was going to say, introduce new pieces into the, into the game. Maybe Black can 
activate the king, but that's actually very difficult. And uh, so Lenya goes for your knight activation move, but a very tricky position, actually. Yeah. Very, very hard to calculate this Whose pawn is stronger? That's the big question. White's rook, I love where it's placed right now, but how can you increase the pressure? And I like this. I kind of like this maneuver, maybe maybe centralizing that knight or, yeah. or maybe trying to use it to support the pawn. Obviously, when I say I like that move, the computer completely drops, <laughs> <laughs> as always, but it seems very logical to put the knight in, in the center of the board. Yeah, very, very logical. And uh, some tricky knight jumps as well, some tricky checks. Black's king has to be really careful where it goes, actually. What does black play? If black's knight moves, if black's knight, for example, goes and grabs white central pawn, then black's past pawn, the B pawn, will drop. Yeah. I don't think you want to make that exchange, mm. ideally. Definitely not. You know, I always say in the end game, it's not about the quantity of pawns, it's the quality of the pawns. And by that, I just mean that how far advanced up the board, you know, whether they are supported, whether they can even move forward. So always never judge by the quantity, judge by how good they are. And uh, yeah, it's, it's difficult because uh, at the same time, Lenya has to guard against the knight check. So maybe, maybe it's time for taking some precautions there try to control the white knight, but that kind of also feels like it's the wrong direction. Uh, such a hard position. Yeah, yeah I mean, there's, okay, this, this seems kind of sensible. That knight was very strong, trying to give it a kick away. Um, I think that's a good move. Yeah, um, and where is white's knight going to run to? Well, suddenly it's, it's still all three results possible. Yeah. I mean, we talked about Zhu Wenjun grinding out this win. Uh, not, we not really talked about her being in trouble, but if she puts on the white knight on a passive square, suddenly Black's pieces could be uh, taking control. 44 seconds, David, as yeah. well. This is quite worrying. I mean, we know how good Dominguez is uh, in, in Blitz being the world, ex-world champion. Um, so Ju Wenjun is, is a little bit of danger here that this, this could go wrong. You're, you're right, David, I think. And she's got to play quickly. 30 seconds on the clock. Yeah. I'm... And she's shaking her head. Yeah. And uh, she doesn't quite know where to put the knight. Um, in this kind of case, I guess, could you argue for maybe tracking the king, gain some t time on the clock, an extra 10 seconds, and then decide what to do with the knight? I think she's panicking a bit there, yeah. Ivanka, isn't she? You could say when you're, sh when you're shaking your head and you've got 20 seconds left, not a good idea. She's got five less, seconds. she's five. got five, four, Move. three. Okay, she gives a check. Just in time. Yeah, so when in doubt, give a check. That tends to be a good strategy. The Black King forced to make a difficult decision. It didn't step into the centre. That would have been maybe more ambitious, but also more risky. Uh, stepping down the board, instead it retreats and she's created a threat, Zhu Wenjun. The White Knight wants to leap forward now, giving a check to the Black King, forking also the Black Rook. A double attack. So Black's Rook or King need to move one of the two. Oh, which one? Do you just move maybe the Black King towards the White Rook? That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just getting out of any potential checks. Mm -hmm. And also stop keeping an eye on the white pawn, uh, the A pawn, making it sure that it doesn't advance further. Yeah, I mean, that would be the first move on my radar, but there might be a downside to that move. The white knight might jump forward anyway. I think she's found a good solution, or at least a safe solution, uh, asking some questions of Dominguez. And uh, he looks so calm, he looks so <laughs> focused. Yeah. What do you think? Will we see a winner in this game? You know Still what? definitely possible. Yeah. All three results possible. I'm thinking that, you know, and I, I, I just looking at the camera, looking at the body language, I see that Ju is maybe in a little bit of a panic mode. She's getting stressed by the clock. Meanwhile, uh, Lenya just looked like he's uh, in his element, you know, completely unfazed. But then again, Ju and Jun, with a few seconds on the clock, she's managed to beat Rapport, beat uh, Wei. Wei Yi, she's beaten several players while playing on the increment and Dominguez has made a couple of mistakes when low on time in the tournament, so the calm exterior might be a mask. Yeah, under 20 seconds. Quarter, quarter up on time, so yeah. I think that was a great, as you said, David, a great idea, the check and the night comeback, yeah. really just clever way of stabilising and, and now it's Dominguez it's who, who's, who's real trouble on time. Five seconds for Five Dominguez. seconds, three. He needs to move the king or the two. rook. Okay, he moves okay. the king. Okay, shuffles across. Very logical. I'm expecting white tonight now to jump forward, attacking the black rook. Again, creating two threats. One to take the black rook. The other one is for the white rook to slide across in front of the black king, give a check, and attack the black knight. So, okay, black had to defend his knight. What has Zhu Wenjun got up her sleeve now? She's created some really nice tricks. 
Can she get greedy, go grab some pawns? Is she going to give a check with the white rook? OK, she tucks her king to the edge of the board. And now her rook is attacked by the black knight. Black's pawn does look very scary, though. I know, it can advance one square. Black's black... pawn can advance one square, but then white's pawn's going to start running. <laughs> Whose pawn is stronger? I think it's your, Ivanka, your rook manoeuvre, getting the white rook behind that pawn is so key, isn't it, in this position? The white rook is such a strong piece, and uh, it does stop that pawn. Four, three, two... Ooh! Who's black? Uh, he's lost a lot of time by doing that. Ooh. He's lost time on the clock and on the board. Yeah. Um, or it's going a little bit up for Ju Wen Jun. Yeah. I know, and the position is still really unclear with both sides having those past pawns. And again, seven seconds for the Chinese Women's World Champion. And uh, now she gets greedy, she, but... Uh... OK, this is risky, though, because <laughs> White's, White's uh, knight is so far away from the action now. Wow. Oh, there we Look go. at the, the evaluation. evaluation. <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah. David. No, I, was just, oh. I was just saying it's going crazy, isn't it? Yeah, and Black now, does he use his rook and go across, go after White's far advanced pawn? That, to me, is the first instinct. White's pawn is too strong, you have to go and stop it. Mm -hmm. Both sides using rooks behind the opponent's pawns, it's really instructive. Maybe now is the time to give a check with the rook to the king, ask some questions, because a bailout... Oh, that was a bad move, according to the bar. <laughs> Never yeah. mind. Okay. Um, Check. Where's Black's King going? It's going forward, of course. I'm just wondering whether you can kind of try to bail out and try to just give up your knight and uh, win the past B pawn. OK, so White's knight gave a check. Will it give another check? It's, it's just offside. She got greedy just for one moment. So she's currently two pawns up, but it's all about Black's past pawn now being much stronger than the counterpart. Mm -hmm. And, OK, this check is desperation, I think. She just wants to get her knight back into play, but Black's King is super active. Black's pieces have taken control. Is there still some hope? You know, now, OK, setting a little trick. If Dominguez is tempted and just grabs that pawn with his rook, hoping to decoy the white rook, unfortunately, that's not possible because there is a check with the knight to the c6 square. Such a, such a <laughs> naughty trick. That one is... I mean, that's the kind of thing anyone could fall into. Maybe we can show it on the board quickly because Dominguez, is he going to fall into this trap? Is he going to take this pawn, as Ivanka mentions, trying to distract the white rook so that black can make a queen? But this would blunder into a nasty knight fork. And uh, he can't play this. He needs to find something else. Maybe move the black king across. He's doing the knight yeah. stable with the king. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, this is... yeah, dominating the knight, controlling any squares it wants to go to. Really, really strong move from there from Dominguez. And maybe that spells the end for Zhu Wenjun. Now, white's knight is just a terrible piece on the edge of the board. Knights on the rim are dim, and this knight is again on the rim. Mm. Oh, there's no way to get it out, yeah. which is so unfortunate. You can get it out this way, but it's just far away from all the action. All the action is about this pawn. Black's knight is a monster, meanwhile. OK, she gives a check. The Black King just sidesteps. And uh, now you have to stop this pawn. You have to go back where you came from. But this is just game over. Once you go back where you came from, the Black Knight... OK, she gives a check. I was going to say the Black Knight blocks and you make a new queen next move. She gives a check instead. And what is happening here? The Black Knight blocks again, and Black is making a new queen. It looks like game over for Zhu Wenjun, unfortunately. Uh, no way to stop Black making a new queen. Oh, heartbreak. Yeah. Heartbreak for the Women's World Champion. Yeah, it just goes to show the effect of the clock. And uh, a new queen is on the board, but OK, it doesn't, you know, doesn't change anything. Black is still completely winning. Unfortunately, a knight and two pawns is not enough compensation for a queen. And, yeah, she'll give a few checks. She might try and grab another pawn with, uh, with her knight, but no more chances. Well, all the other games that have finished so far have ended with uh, draws. It looks like Jan Christoph Duda is about to win against Arjun Erigaisi. I've seen the bar all the way over to the young Indian side all game, so that must have been a dramatic one. Duda shifting it around and maybe about to uh, win two of the young players uh, towards the top of the table. Juwen Jun, she had a fantastic day yesterday, but it looks like she is about to lose to Lenya Dominguez, who uh, is uh, fighting hard to qualify. He only has five points before this round, so it's looking really hard for him. But three points will be very important for him in this game. And Aryan Tari just won his game against Radoslav Wojtacek. Three points for the Norwegian. 
Yeah, this is uh, heartbreaking. I was just looking, she played so well for 45 moves and just one mistake. And that cost her in this game. But Dominguez, yeah, maybe he'll launch a comeback now. Yeah, it's how just, safe the Black King is. <laughs> yeah, it's when the time started to get low. Um, Ji yeah. Wenjun just went a little bit wrong there. So easy to do, uh, you know, to, to even in these end game positions, they, they can be tactically so complicated. And that's, that's the end. We, we have a result. Yep, she has resigned.